My guest today is Christine Matheny. Christine, how are you? I'm great. You know, it's it's what month we finished month one of sheltering in place, and now it's month two. Um, oh yeah, you this... started yours before Chicago started <laughs> ours because you're in uh, San Francisco, right? I am. I'm in San Francisco. We were we were sent home May March fifth. Um, mm. So it's but it's been good. I've been finding ways to be productive and hang out with awesome people online like you. So excited to be talking today. I'm excited to talk to you as well. Uh, you know, for the folks at home. Uh, Christine and I, Christine and I used to work together, and it was always a joy to work with Christine because sometimes things went really well, and sometimes they were not as good. But Christine always had a great attitude, and she was always very professional no matter what happened, and uh, that's why it was such a pleasure to work with you. Oh, thanks, David. You've you've always been such a great champion of of, of me and everybody you work with. Um, you oh. make every all of us feel honored and special, and um, I'm really I'm really glad we can touch base and hang out again. All right, let's 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 move on. This is. <laughs> Um, let's talk about I want to talk about one of your passions because I know that you've worked with kids for a long time you worked with uh, you and I we worked with college students when we were working together and uh, and you worked with Girl Scouts and high school kids and tell, tell me a little about that experience the, what you've done yeah so uh, my my dream when I go up, grow up when I get when I grow up I want to help more little girls become computer scientists and be engineers and coders like ultimately I'd love to run STEM education for Girl Scouts um, so one of the things I've been working on recently um, is Girl Scouts came out with coding for good badges for um, girls almost kindergarten through high school about um, how girls can start learning how to code how coding is fun and doable and how really coding can change the world and so recently I've been volunteering with Girl Scouts of Northern California, which is my local Girl Scout council. Um, and it stretches from almost like ha from the middle of California all the way to the top. So it's a ton of, ton of troops and girls and training leaders. So these are the, le the, the, the parents who may know nothing about coding that are um, afraid of computers, maybe not afraid, but are hesitant to mash buttons until it works. Um, okay. And training them on how to teach their girls computer science. Um, and I think the coolest part is watching them because uh, when I tell them, okay, let's write an algorithm, I get a lot of, what is an algorithm? And it's the same reaction you get with small with girls. If you told an eight-year-old eight -year girl to write an algorithm, they would look at you like you're crazy. Um, <laughs> but then when we break it down to if this, then that statements, and we, we like practice making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches using if then then if if the peanut butter if the peanut butter is in the jar let's take the lid off um, and things like that um, seems uh. to work really well um, and breaking breaking coding down into a small achievable steps is it's something that I find works really well with both adults and um, both both adults and, and young girls um, yeah all right, you, and you were a Girl Scout, right? I, I'm still a Girl Scout. I've been a Girl Scout since I was five. Um, I run a Girl Scout camp every summer. So uh, the, I teach coding for girls and go coding for um, Girl Scouts during the school year. And then over the summer, 150, or 100 girls and 50 staff and I spend a week camping with no no cell phone service, no internet, um, some electricity. And we spend 10 days camping underneath the stars, kind of getting away from all nice. of the electronics. So it's it's even more fun when you get back and you can, oh, I learned all these things at camp. Let's see if I can go go um, do something cool with technology again. That is pretty cool. Uh, was there anything like this when you were a kid? I think we, like, so I'm I'm 28. Um, and so when I was a kid, I... I lucked out. I was able to participate in a first robotics team, an FRC oh, yeah. team, which built robots that were five feet by three feet by three feet. And I was the part of the, one of the first ever Girl Scouts first robotics team. So there were um, 30, cool. 15 to 30 girls on our, on our team and we built robots and we were the space cookies. Uh, we were sponsored by NASA. <laughs> and so what? NASA plus Girl Scouts equals the space cookies. Cool. Uh, we built our robots at NASA Ames here in here in Mountain View, um, and we all of our mentors worked at NASA um, or were parents, and it was a really cool place. One of the things that I've learned teaching girls about technology is that if you're in a if you're in a space um, surrounded by other girls, you're more likely to try things that are scary, um, and you're less you're less likely like when I'm in a group of other girls trying cool technology things, I'm less likely to raise my hand and be like I don't understand this and. Um, it's there's more collaboration and less of the worrying about what what the boys are thinking across the room um, when you're in a space of all girls and um, that's how it turned out for, for first or I did first robotics growing up and um, of the girls in my in my first robotics team I think 75% of us are in STEM 
STEM careers. A lot of people are building robots wow. or doing microbiology, and we're all super nerds, um, which is awesome. That is awesome. I actually, uh, one year I went to the national finals, or maybe yeah. that was the world finals. They were in St. Louis mm-hmm. at the old football stadium in St. Louis, and I got to see the the they had some competition with castles and it was sort of like a <laughs> like a lacrosse game. They're they're yeah, but with robots throwing, throwing things through a hoop. Yeah, they're controlling robots that would throw things through a hoop, and it was also a little bit of battle bots. They were bumping into each other and you know, running interference. It yeah, was pretty I- cool. I think, I think that's what really what helps get kids engaged is if you can build something and see it interact, um, phys- having something physical happen uh, really sparks the interest. Um, that's what I find is really exciting. If you program something and it makes a light bulb light up, um, it's more it can be more exciting than a, a print line, um, which is why I think First Robotics works really well as a student engagement opportunity. Absolutely. And 75% are in STEM, which is well below the national average. One of the challenges, I think, is just getting uh, young girls to be, to get interested in STEM so that they can become computer scientists and engineers and things that traditionally have been more male-dominated. And- yeah. Um, when I started at Microsoft, um, I'd say a third of the people in my starting class were, uh, were women, technical women. Um, okay. But now I, in the org, I sit in, um, I sit, I work for Microsoft's Teals, Teals program, technology, education, literacy, and schools. And our goal is to get, um, is to train high school teachers so that we can have more high school teachers teaching computer science. Um, we do this by pairing up volunteers who know computer science, like you and me, um, like any of your our friends um, who co-teach with the teacher. Um, and we've seen a lot of success in g- retaining girls and keeping girls interested through high school computer science. Because if you have a, a teacher in the room who's a technical woman who works at, at Google or at YouTube or at, um, at Amazon or, or at Microsoft, um, seeing somebody who looks like you in computer science helps, helps keep you excited and, and helps you want to do that in your future. That's awesome. So, so this is your day job. The Girl Scout thing you were kind of doing on your own. Exactly. And now your day job actually is is your passion, which is very yeah. Cool. I am uh, I am so lucky. Tell me about that program a little bit. So you're you're there's somebody as, as at least as it applies to Microsoft. Somebody from Microsoft is working with a high school teacher. Is that it? That's it exactly. So there's um there's about five five hundred high schools five to seven hundred high schools across the U.S. who participate in our program, and especially schools who otherwise wouldn't be able to teach computer science. They can't find a teacher who knows it. Um, is, the teacher... is that the main barrier? Just finding an expert that can teach it, yeah. or are there other barriers? That's probably the biggest barrier. If you know computer science. Um, you can go get paid to work at a big tech company, or you could teach high school computer science. And um, the draws of tech, the tech world, um, there's are, more money in the tech. There's more money in the tech world, exactly. Um, it's a little bit more lucrative to be in the tech world than to be a high school computer science teacher. Yeah. Uh, so you're you're mentoring the teachers and you're teaching the students simultaneously. Exactly. Exactly. Your team. Um, over the course of uh, two to four years, a teacher goes from knowing minimal computer science to be able to teach an AP computer science class on their own, um, which hmm. is just an amazing, an amazing thing to see. That's pretty cool. Uh, what, what else are you doing here? I know there's, I, we, we talked before the cameras were rolling and I, yeah. I, I was overwhelmed by the amount of work that you're doing. So one of the cool things that our team is doing at work is that, so um, a lot of schools are out of school right now. A lot of schools are, are uh, closed for the rest of the school year. And a lot of our volunteers, so we have 1800 volunteers and for the TEALS program um, are doing a lot of mentorship for students um, asynchronously. Um, hmm. The AP exam, AP Computer Science A, which is Java, is still happening in, okay. in May. Um, and a lot of students need help prepping. Um, so a lot of our volunteers are spending their time getting the students ready and helping them prep for the AP exam, even though school is out, um, hmm. which is just really heartwarming and really excites me. Because um, can you imagine being a student um, saying, hey, the AP exam is still in a month and school's out? Yeah, I'm actually learning Java right now, <laughs> coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a challenge for me. All right, yeah. So th- you said those are those are volunteers that are helping? They, they work for Microsoft or other companies, but that's, yeah, this is a side thing. Exactly. This is um, you, normally um, our vol- the Teals program volunteers volunteer the hour before work. So they'll volunteer from like um, 7.30 to 8.30 in the morning and then go to go to work afterwards. Um, but right now that they're, everybody is kind of in a different world. Um, everybody is, uh, there's a lot of 
um, hey, I'll be online during the, my lunch hour if you want to ask me questions about um, studying for the AP exam um, or for okay. like the AP computer science principles. Um, that exam was canceled and the students have to submit like a project about what they learned this year and why computer science is awesome. Um, and so helping mentor the students as they build those projects. Um, so these volunteers are still taking time, even though school is canceled and they're not going at their regular times, um, mm -hmm. the volunteers are taking time out of their day to mentor, mentor the high school students across the country. Um, and in British Columbia, Canada, about how to prep for the AP exam. Oh, nice. Like office hours. Exactly. I remember when you and I worked together, you were in charge of something called Imagine Cup, which was which was a great success and a lot of fun. But uh, mostly that's limited to college students. Are you, are you still involved in that? Yeah. So for the college students, not so much. Um, but this year they launched something. We launched something called Imagine Cup Junior for high school students to, ma to learn AI. Um, and mm. so they could also participate. Um, so the Azure team and um, across other teams across Microsoft worked together to put together um, a day of AI learning content of like, what are the basics of AI? How can you learn AI in a day or in a week? Um, and then um, the students who learn that, they can compete and build something to show how AI will change the world. A lot of the projects are themed around AI for good. And so how, how can AI um, solve some of the world's biggest problems? And it's it's more of a thought 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 leadership project than a go build it because you know we're all we can't build in something you can't save the world in a day um, but really thinking through thinking through how AI could solve problems like you know can you identify trash in the ocean with AI um, can you track um, air pollution levels based on things using AI um, what's the problem you know can you track how um, the elderly in your community are doing socially using AI um, so thinking through how uh, AI can solve problems both locally in your community and globally um, through um, writing software and, and um, creating creative solutions is what the Imagine Cup Junior is. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've, uh, it is a competition to uh, uh, nationally, internationally, just like the original Imagine Cup is. Exactly. So it's an international competition. Um, there's um, like there's there's South America, North America, Asia, Europe, um, a couple other regions get to compete, um, and so they all send their um, top top um, submissions they get graded or um, you know um, judged. Re judged across across the at, in their region locally and then they get nominated um, for the world Imagine Cup Junior competition and it's it I think it's really cool because it Imagine Cup it's something you hear about for college students but um, if you can get people excited in high school about changing the world with technology um, and start that earlier and earlier um, I think I think David, the next generation of computer scientists are going to blow our minds. Um, uh, I'm really totally excited agree. to meet them. Uh, my, my son is part of that generation, so that's really cool. <laughs> um, I, I actually am involved in something called the uh, uh, ISTI STEM Challenge. Yeah. I, I forgot what the IST stands for. Illinois Science and Technology something. Um, and that's that's similar to what you described. It's all it's all based on AI. People are they're not building software, but they're they're proposing software. They're building PowerPoint decks to propose this is a solution around AI. That's um, that's that they want to present at a showcase. It's not a competition. It's more of a showcase to show off ideas and get high school age kids interested in computer science and AI. What kind but, of inspiring uh, projects have you seen from that? Oh, from me, uh, a couple of them from the school that I'm working with is uh, there was one which was. Uh, uh, vision detection to uh, identify and uh, interpret sign language, uh, you know, to and from voice to sign wow. language, mm -hmm. so that uh, make it easier at a, at a fast food counter to communicate with the the, the person in line. And, yeah. Um, you know, like, there was one on uh, identifying expired food and building a shopping list on that. So just really cool creative ideas that have come out of that, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. It used to be it was more fun when we could actually go to the schools and work directly with the students. Now, of course. The coronavirus has stopped that, <laughs> but we're still we have some online interactions now. It's yeah, been and, fun. And I, but we're not doing the AI for Earth thing, which is um, which I think is even more cool. I mean, they're not necessarily proposing that uh, because yeah. our friend Jennifer is involved in the Microsoft's AI for Earth team. Are you working with her or her team at all? I'm not personally, but I heard that her team helped contribute to the content and some of the training I because um, I went through the content and it was really it. 
it it felt um, fairly accessible and inspiring. That was like that's one of the traits when I think of Jennifer writing content right. is like, hey, she creates content that's really doable and achievable, and and I feel like I've, I'm going to make a change in the world. Um, so that's that's kind of what I felt looking at the AI for for Earth and AI for Good content, and that's all available for everybody anybody who wants to look at Microsoft's AI for Good and AI for stuff online, um, which is which is awesome. Has your uh, approach changed in the recent weeks as we're all staying at home and a lot of the schools or the, the buildings are closed? Yeah, so a couple of things that my team has helped with, um, as well as with orgs across Microsoft, um, is we've been helping create engaging um, environments online for students. Um, so we put together a set of remote best practices around um, how do you how do you get a room of students online be engaged when you can't necessarily see all of their faces? Mm -hmm. um, so doing interactive things like through polling or um, different types of waterfall chats or different types of um, if you when you do a chat with a group of people and you say okay type it and then if we all say it at the same time instead of um, instead of everybody building off each other um, it kind of creates a different experience in chat um, as well as things like Flipgrid have you ever used Flipgrid? That sounds familiar. Describe it to me. Maybe it'll yeah, it's a it's a platform where students can record um, cool videos of them doing things and submit it okay. towards a project. Mm -hmm. um, so as some of um, the, the computer science students are are prepping for their end of year project about you know how are we how is computer science relevant. Um, to the global economy or things like that, they can submit videos and people, um, fellow students can comment and, and provide feedback on it. So it's a cool way to do asynchronous um, presentations and, and hmm. building on each other. So that's one of the, the cool things, as well as um, we've been helping a lot of classrooms move online as Microsoft. Um, so I was really pr impressed that uh, Microsoft Teams for Education was is provided free to all of our schools across, across the world about for um, online education. So I, I have hope that a lot of our students are able, a lot of students that, that we work with and that um, you and I are touching or are um, interacting with are able to learn. And one thing I wanted to share is like, I'm, re I'm really grateful and glad to hear that you're mentoring. Um, one of the things I read recently was that 86% of people who um, have a mentor through high school or college are, are more likely to finish college. Um, oh. And so thanks for mentoring um, the students in Illinois. And um, thank you to all the Teals volunteers out there who are mentoring students, because um, it makes a real difference. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to hear, or really excited that I'm part of helping that and that you're part of that. And so, yeah, oh, thanks. Well, I, I appreciate everything that you're doing. And I, I will say that uh, I hope that the kids get something out of me mentoring them, but I know that I get something out of it. Yes, for sure. I I learned one of the things I've learned from students is that I am really out of it in terms of what's cool with social media. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like TikTok, really? not figured out TikTok yet. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I think one of the cool things I find mentoring younger students is what they're excited about, what they're inspired by. Like global warming is something that I found a lot of elementary and through high school students want to solve um, through technology, um, hmm. which I wouldn't have seen you know ten years ago. Uh, soon they will solve it. Yeah, I, I'm crossed. sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Christine. Thank you for uh, being with me today, and thank you for everything you're doing. Yeah, thanks for being my friend in technology, David. Like, I always love hanging out with you. Thank you for being my friend in technology, David. I love hanging out with you all the time.